Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. Uh, and I thought today we would take a look at the second lesson that's assigned for evening prayer tonight, for Friday, uh, and that is from the letter of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Now remember, Paul is setting out a theological treatise to the church in Rome. It's one of the churches that he's writing to that he hasn't been to yet. Uh, and so he is laying down the doctrinal teaching uh, that is so important so that when he gets there, they're able to talk about this and to understand the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what it is that God is doing uh, in this particular way through Jesus. Uh, and so uh, we're up to chapter 3, beginning at verse number 21. And this contains a verse that I use a lot in my sermons. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnesses by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Who is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yea, yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we make then void the law through faith? God forbid. Yes, we establish the law. Okay, so remember, one of the struggles that Paul is going through is this idea of how is the law fulfilled, right? The law that was given to God through the people of the original covenant, are they now bound to keep all these things like the dietary rules uh, and the circumcision, right? And we know that Paul has quite the going about with what he would call the Judaizers within the church, those Jews who really believe that you need to become a uh, the Gentiles have to become Jews in order to really be uh, members of the body of Christ. If you can't really be a Christian, a member of the New Covenant, unless you are also a member of the Old Covenant or the Original Covenant. Uh, and of course, Paul is vehemently opposed to this. Uh, and once again, he's laying out that the law was established uh, as a way to convince and convict people of sin and their need to repent. Uh, but now, our salvation isn't through the bloodline. It's not because I'm related to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as a member of the original covenant, but it's by faith, right? It is the righteousness, right? And, and of course, it contains that wonderful line. I hope when you heard it, you're like, oh my God, Father Kelly says that all the time, right? We all sin and fall short of the glory of God, right? Now, some people hear that and they go, ah, how dare you say such a thing, Father? That's really mean of you, very unaffirming for you to say we all sin. But we do. We're, we're all affected by original sin and we all do actional sin. It happens. It's a reality. It's what it is. But it's actually good news. I find it a consolation to realize, to accept the fact that we all do sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. Jesus knows that. God knows that. And that's why he sent his son into the world to save us from our sins, right? We all, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but thanks be to God that we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's the very next line. For we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, verse 23, followed by 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Right? So even though it sounds like terrible news that we're all convinced and convicted of sin, it is actually good news because it is through Jesus Christ and our faith, right? that grace-filled decision that we make to follow him and to believe that he is Lord, that we are in fact forgiven. All right, today's Friday. 
Uh, and so I hope that you're praying morning and evening prayer on your own. Uh, today is, is Father Kelly's uh, little Sabbath day. Uh, I'm not going to be in the office today. Uh, and so there'll be no live streams. But of course, you are more than welcome to pray the offices on your own. Uh, and of course, read the lessons that are appointed as well. And I pray that you have a fantastic Friday. God bless you.